Welcome YouTubers. This is Lawn Smoke, Professor Walker, and this is the first video in a series on criminology. And criminology is the study of crime, of how, why, what. Um, we're really trying to understand crime, understand why people do what they do, why criminals commit crime, why the police act the way they do, why judges, why the system is the way it is. Well, if we're going to understand something about criminology, the first thing we go to, the first theory, is classical crime theory. And why is it called classical? It's a classic. It's really the earliest uh, approach that's a secular approach to understanding why people do what they do and why people specifically commit crime. <clears throat> One of the key assumptions of classical crime theory is that we're all creatures that, it, that exercise free will. What we do is our choice. And those choices, we're responsible for them. And then those choices should have consequences. And most of our life, we can probably see that. We see the choices we make and the consequences that come from that. <clears throat> so, if I believe that everyone in society has free will to choose what they do it's then fair to have a criminal justice system that punishes according to uh, an expression that we've all probably heard or used that hey you do the crime you do the time right something like that I'm sure you've heard before um, and that's really the American justice system right there <clears throat> we're responsible for what we do we get caught we go in front of a judge a judge issues us you know if we're found guilty a sanction penalty probation prison whatever we did the crime we do the time we're responsible well one of the key things to this theory is there's something um, we call it a hedonistic calculus and uh, Jeremy Bentham uh, philosopher who is a utilitarian thinker where he believed uh, this utilitarianism that policies and and whatever we do as a government or other institutions should be designed for the greatest good of all he believed that all human beings when they're deciding on actions to take whether it's a crime or really any other action that we have a hedonistic calculus, a pleasure calculus that measures pleasure and pain. And if the perceived pleasure is greater than the pain that could come from that, well then we're probably gonna do it. If the pain is too high, well then maybe we won't do it. And that is the underlying principle really of deterrence, right? That if you have a 20-year prison term as a possible sentence for committing a bank robbery, well, I'm not going to commit that bank robbery because I certainly don't want to go to prison for 20 years. That's really classical crime theory right there. We're free will creatures. We're responsible for what we do. We make calculations in our head, pleasure versus pain. If the pain is too high, we won't do something. If the pain's not high enough, maybe we will. So criminal justice policy based on that makes sentences that should be commiserate to the crime committed. Murder, death sentence, life in prison. Robbery, down here. Sexual assault, maybe somewhere up here. And then we get down to really low crimes where then the punishment should be much lower. Um, Another key person, I mean, we mentioned Jeremy Bentham. Another key person in classical crime theory is Cesare Beccaria. And Cesare Beccaria is a very interesting guy. Beccaria wrote a book called On Crimes and Punishment, or an essay. And in that, he laid out a lot of his ideas of this classical crime theory and how this should be used as an approach to the justice system. And this was in response to just the corruption of the system in his home country in Italy. And some of the things that he came up with 
is that he thought laws should be simple and clear. Laws should reflect a consensus of the population because then if a law doesn't have the backing and support of the population, then that would probably be an unjust or an unfair law. He believed the public should be educated and educated about the justice system. And he was a huge proponent of eliminating corruption, eliminating, eliminating favoritism, having a justice system that was equal to all. And he also believed that we should not just punish offenders, but we should reward virtue in society. And um, classical crime theory, it's really, again, it is the basis of the American justice system. It is a very solid in its thinking, but it does have a couple of flaws. And that's why there was what we call the neoclassical theory, where there was a little bit of some revisions to that. Because some of those early philosophers and thinkers and early criminologists, even though they wouldn't have called themselves criminologists back then, um, they came up with some exceptions to this free will. And that would be things like, say, if somebody was insane, you know, somebody who was criminally insane, um, well, maybe they don't have the same free will as you or I, and so maybe the law should treat them a little differently. And so they admitted that there are factors and there are things that could cause our free will to not be completely 100% free. Well, that's kind of a wrap on classical crime. All right, thank you for watching. Please subscribe to the channel. Lawn Smoke, Professor Walker, till next time.